Have you ever wanted to live inside the world of Pikmin? Well, now you can. The first thing that I noticed was just how truly massive everything was to Olimar in this world. Even the Pikmin were only a little bit smaller than him. Not going to lie, they actually seem really intimidating this close. There is something that I really wanted to experience in VR, but first we need to get through the first two days. Simple tasks in this game, such as throwing Pikmin, become surprisingly difficult when you can hardly see where you are actually throwing them. I also found that if you turn your head around, you can actually see yourself standing there. The scale of this paper bag makes it so that you can't even see what is on the other side. Being in VR allows for you to see details that are extremely hard to notice otherwise. For example, on this Duracell battery it says, um... Actually, I take that back. As the Pikmin take the treasure back, I wanted to take some time to look around. Seeing the ship up close was so surreal. It was as if I was actually touching it. But aside from that, there isn't much going on in the first day of the game. On the second day, I learned that it is impossible to keep track of Pikmin when you are moving quickly as you can't exactly see behind you that well. After gathering enough Pikmin, I faced my first challenge. Throwing them up onto this ledge. No, a ball borb. What is usually a trivial task with my experience in this game now feels like a completely new obstacle. I figured that my best approach is to throw Pikmin, since using the C-Stick to control them is a little bit difficult. Unfortunately, I lost a few Pikmin during the fight. The first time I think I've actually lost Pikmin at this point in the game. But now it is time to see what it looks like inside of a cave. And oh my gosh, it is something. Going from the vast outdoors to the cramped cave systems was quite the contrast. It actually felt like I was underground in some narrow passage. Which is really what these caves actually are. Anyway, I fight my way through by blindly throwing Pikmin until some of them land on the target before reaching the purple Pikmin. And damn, they are beefy up close. I use them to grab the massive globe and unlock the ability to travel to a new area. However, we all know what happens at this point. I want to experience something that truly feels like a new experience in VR. The only problem is I have to progress through the game some more. And there's only one real way I can think of doing that. That's right, we're gonna cheat. Oh look, all of the areas are unlocked. I quickly head to the Awakening Book to grab Blue Pikmin and find out that water in this game is really difficult to see through. But don't worry, I already have 999 Blue Pikmin. With that, it's time to head to the most horrifying Nintendo level ever created, the Submerged Castle. Apparently all of the blue Pikmin have flowers, so I don't even have to check behind me and see if any have fallen behind. There it is. The entrance. Wasting no time, I jump in and prepare myself for what is to come. For people who haven't played this game, you may not understand what is so intimidating about this level. For starters, it only allows blue Pikmin despite featuring every type of threat in the game. The second part, well, we will get there. It's hard to actually navigate the tight corridors of the cavern in VR, which means I have to take it slower than usual. And this isn't a good thing. I lure this fireball blurb into the water and toss my blue Pikmin at him. 26 Pikmin end up falling in the conflict, but I'm not too worried about it. Yet. I managed to get all of the treasures on the first floor without too much trouble after that. The next floor was also rather simple, and I murdered some baby ball blur's mother and forced them into my army, another sub-level that went by smoothly. But I can't say the same for what is about to come next. The next floor features electricity, which is the most dangerous threat in the game next to bombs. Fortunately, the baby ball blurbs are immune to everything, so destroying these electric gates isn't a problem. Things start to go horribly wrong once I try to retrieve two pieces of treasure. These electric spider things trap me in a cycle of constantly fighting them to stop them from picking up my treasure. I don't want to kill them because they'll probably just wipe out every last one of my Pikmin in a second. And I... oh no. The Water Wraith has arrived. This monster is unkillable and rides on two stone wheels that instantly kill anything it comes in contact with. Now my microphone input unfortunately didn't record because Oculus likes to switch my outputs whenever I plug it in. So just imagine Markiplier playing FNAF as my reaction. At this point I could have just said screw it and flee to the next floor, but I was determined to get to the remaining treasures. I managed to somehow get the treasure past the spiders and into the ship, but now I needed to find the exit. There is nothing more terrifying than having that water wave roam around where you try and avoid it. The sounds make it difficult to tell if it is right behind you or right around the corner. After finding the exit, I gather whatever Pikmin I can to break it open. And after a painful minute, I managed to finally reach the next floor. Remember how I said electricity was the most deadly threat next to the bombs? Yeah, this floor has bombs. Bombs that can fall from anywhere in the level. It also features two mother ball blurbs, which I once again execute and steal the children of. If you thought bombs were bad in the regular game, they are nothing compared to VR. Especially when you almost fail to notice them completely. I carefully navigate my way throughout the caverns and search for the treasure. Since I skipped the default progression of the game, I don't have the item that tracks treasures for me, meaning that I have to find them by myself. I somehow managed to throw a Pikmin onto this glistening beetle only for a bomb to directly fall onto me. Aside from that, I managed to grab the first two treasures without much of a hassle. 
However, like an absolute idiot, I forget that there is actually a fur treasure. That throws me into a panic as I try to locate it, only to realize it is being guarded by two flying bomb throwing guys. And yeah, the water race spawned again. This time I split my captains into two and have one constantly draw the attention, while the other has to pick and carry the treasure to the ship. I'm honestly surprised at how well I was able to play in VR. The game doesn't feel uncomfortable, it feels like an entirely new experience. And with a bit of time, I finally retrieved the treasure. Finally, the final floor. After the 30 minutes of pain this cave has brought to me, it's time for some revenge. You are granted 10 purple Pikmin, and with them you are able to stun the Water Wraith and make him vulnerable. It's still terrifying sitting there and throwing Pikmin onto an enemy you can't actually see the health of as it towers above you. Fortunately I managed to get him down in one phase, as he enters into blubber mode. He runs around aimlessly and you once again summon him to defeat him. And with that, it is finally over. I beat the submerged castle all well in VR. Seriously this game works incredibly well for being in first person in VR. It makes me wish that Nintendo would make remakes of older classic games in VR, because you could bet I would sell a kitty to buy them. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. I'll have some links in the description and crediting those I use the guides of to make this work, and if you enjoyed this video, I can guarantee that you will enjoy this video.